All right, welcome back. Episode 176 of Chaotically Intolerant. We had some uh, technical issues on Tuesday night. That's why we're coming out a little late with the episode. Um, but we have Big Steck here from the Unstable Podcast. I do my uh, my guest spots on there, you know, as much as I possibly can. Um, big Colts fan, of course. So smartest guy, smartest guy in the room, um, you know, being a Colts fan. Uh, we're going to talk every week two game. And we're going to talk every week three game. We're going to give a little prediction. I'm going to give my bets. I don't know if we'll talk the Thursday night game. We'll try and talk a little Thursday night. Um, But make sure to like, comment, subscribe, the whole thing. Um, And go over to Unstable and like, comment, subscribe on them as well. And head over to the Curtis Podcast Network. You guys have have heard Curtis before on here. Um, Do all that. And let's go. All right, Jeff. So, sure. I guess give a, give a little uh, give a little intro um, for yourself, big stack. Introduce yourself to the channel. Well, I'm I'm large. <laughs> I'm a big guy, so everyone's always calls me big. Last name Steck. Um, yeah, I mean I've you know, we I've been going with this AFC South show for a couple of years on the Curtis Podcast Network, and you know going strong ever since. We branched out. I want to say early this year, made unstable third and teal Texans, uh, that real Texas team podcast and Titans takeaways. So we're, we got a whole umbrella going. I think he's, you know, he's got guys together to do a whole another whole other division. So we're trying to make it a whole big, big group so we can get a bunch yeah. of people talking. Yeah. We're trying to create like Absolutely. a community. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's, let's start with Thursday night. Uh, I think this has been kind of the two, a thing has been hammered home a lot. Uh, this this past week, um, the only thing I have to say on the Tua concussion is I hope he makes the best decision for his health and <laughs> his family. Um, I don't have his medicals, so I don't know. Can't make it. Can't make a statement. Um, but the Bills have found a way to run the football really, really well. Yep. That is the main takeaway, in my opinion. They can run the football while Allen's hand heals. I don't know if you have anything on that game. Yeah, no. I mean they've. <laughs> You know, two and went down. I mean, the game was going already pretty bad. He threw you know, a few yeah. picks before he went out. So it was already – I mean, Josh Allen didn't even really have to do a whole lot in that game. It was pretty much all James Cook defense. Mm-hmm. Just kind of the Buffalo Bills bread and butter right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Saints-Cowboys. The Saints route the Cowboys. The Cowboys uh, break their 16-home game winning streak. Um, you are in Texas, so I'm sure mm-hmm. this makes you incredibly happy to see – uh, they just absolutely kicked the shit out of them. That's that's all you can say. Um, Prescott did lead in yardage, so there's something good for for the Cowboys. But uh, are, I can't tell if the Saints are real, man. I I don't know. They're they're trying to sell me on the Saints, and I just can't buy in on Derek Carr and, and Dennis Allen. More Dennis Allen, I can't buy in on. Yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, Kamara's always been you know probably one of the top running backs, and he just had. I don't know if that's really. I mean. Three touchdowns, well, four touchdowns, I think he had. That, that should be a career day. I don't know. I think he's done it before with more yards. Oh, he's he's done it with more touchdowns. Christmas yeah, Day, it's crazy. like 2021, he had a crazy day. Or Christmas <laughs> Eve. Can't remember which one. I don't know how he can get four touchdowns and, you know, whatever, 100-plus yards rushing. I don't know how many receiving. 65. <laughs> oh, two, two for 65, two receptions for 65 yards. It's not even a career day for him. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, if they were going to beat the Cowboys, that's exactly what they needed to do, and they did it perfectly. And you know, Dallas was just trying to play catch up the entire game and force Dak into those couple interceptions. So, yeah, the Cowboys. Uh, I I always buy in on the Cowboys early. I like I I always think they're going to be really really good. And um, I was I was clearly wrong in this one. I had way too much faith in the Cowboys. As a Houston fan, like nobody in Houston likes the Cowboys. So it's, I don't know if you guys see those, you know, that Stephen A, that video of him just always laughing when the Cowboys lose, especially when they oh, get yeah. decimated. He just kind of did that troll thing where his head kind of pops into the frame. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's that's every Houston, Houstonian when the Cowboys lose. It's going to make, <laughs> yeah, it makes its rounds. Definitely makes mm-hmm. its rounds. Uh, Bucks Alliance. The Bucks walk out of there with a win. That's a big revenge win. Baker, I think this was. I wouldn't say this is a signature win for Todd Bowles. I feel like winning in the playoffs is reserved for, for a signature win. 
but this was a big one. I mean, this was the question mark for the Bucks. Um, can they do it? And, and they got it done. And I was really happy to see. Oh, yeah. I, the, that, not to kind of stray too far off topic, but the fact that Baker Mayfield, you know, the Browns did him the way that they did him. He goes off to Tampa and he's been, he's been really good, if not great for, for yeah. the Bucks. And seeing that, that's just, that's just Cleveland for you. <laughs> but, you know, that, that connection that he's got with Godwin and Mike Evans, you know, and, and the Lions are no slouch. I mean, Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, I mean, they've got, I expected this game to be a lot higher scoring. So uh, I'm surprised that the Bucks pulled it off with 20. I really thought the Lions were going to take it. So you know, it, was, it's, it was a good game. Yeah, Dan, Dan Campbell, um, he had some lays nuts on the table. And usually, because those worked out, he, he had the fake punt. Mm. Usually when they do that, they win the game. So this was a little weird that they those things worked out and they still lost. Jared Goff threw the ball 55 times for 307. He did have two picks, but like the, the Detroit led in every category and right, mm-hmm. passing, rushing, and receiving, and they still found a way to lose this one. It felt like those old Lions. It felt like an old Lions game with, with Matt Stafford, really. But holy shit. I mean, even Aiden Hutchinson, I feel like every single play it was, oh, sack, sack, sack. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how the Lions didn't come over with the win there, but, you know, Tampa, they, they did what they needed to. Baker Baker also led the Bucks in rushing yards with 34, and they had 185 pass yards. Just efficient, incredibly efficient compared to uh, to the Lions. Just no efficiency there whatsoever. Um, Colts, Packers. What a brutal game. Really bad. Really bad. Really. I, I will say the defense stepped up late in the game. Um, but uh, the offense was just uh, uninspired is the word I, I have used before, and that's what they looked like. They looked uninspired, uncreative. I don't. Uh, the th- I think uh, Gus Bradley saved his job in the second half. I'll say that because if that was going to continue, there's no way he has a job Monday morning. Um, I, yeah, you, you get your takeoff on that. I, I don't understand how the game defensively ended. Like, why didn't it start that way? Like, you had to know what the backwards were going to do. You had to know what their game plan was going to be. You had to know they were going to come out, run the ball. And Malik Willis is not very good. <laughs> I mean, he's athletic. He was efficient. But he, was he was incredibly efficient. efficient. But that's – the Colts have a history of making, you know, average below average quarterbacks look much better than they are. Yeah. And they did it again here. I mean, they put up a quarter worth of rushing. I said it before. Quarter worth of rushing and, you know, like a game's worth of rushing in, in a quarter. I said that all backwards. I never thought I'd say that Alec Pierce would be the top receiver right now for the Colts. And he is. I mean, he's yeah. been the most effective, the most efficient, the most reliable. And the biggest takeaway is I don't understand Shane Steichen at all in this one. I don't, I don't get it being a six-point game and Taylor not, not being on the field at all in the fourth quarter. Makes he's it. your best player. He's your best player. How does that not happen? Nine yards a carry. Yeah. And, yeah, we're just going to sit him down in the fourth. They're saying we're, we're throwing the ball. Okay, throw it to fucking him. <laughs> he's the only – him and Pierce are the only ones that can catch the goddamn ball. Mm-hmm. I and <laughs> I don't understand. It seems like he's using the same playbook that he had for Gardner Minshew. Like, are you really yes. trying to turn Anthony Richardson into a court, like a pocket passer? It, it, it looks like the same playbook that he had with Minshew. Just I, I don't know. Steichen is infuriating me right now. Uh, I I think Shane Steichen forgot that he has Anthony Richardson. I really think he forgot. That they're tall. One one is incredibly tall. The other is Gardner Minshew height, and he still forgot. Um, so I'm I'm not. I haven't. I wasn't happy with Shane Steichen last year. I know a lot of people were, um, because you know. I mean, that was a good team. It felt like Frank Reich. It felt like it felt like that first year with Reich, even though he did have Andrew Luck, where it was like, oh man, like he's he's figuring it out. Like this this team, they just figured it out. And last year felt the exact same way. They just found way to win games. Yeah, they lost in, in week 18, but they were finding ways to win games. And now, I mean, listen, you're, you're touting this, this highly talented quarterback. I don't, I'm not going to blame Richardson for, for the turnovers. I mean, yes, it was, but he, again, he's a project. That's, that's the whole point of it. He's a project. You got to force him to be a quarterback. You have to put pressure down on him and say, 
you need to be a quarterback in the NFL, not in college. You got to take chances. You throw a pick, that's okay. That's fine. But don't be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of using the guy. And I'm not even talking about his legs. I'm just talking about maybe a rollout. Give me give me a rollout. Give me – don't run the fucking option with, with Trey Sermon. <laughs> I don't know what that was either. <laughs> I was so confused. And, you know, uh, uh, Curtis got – you know, uh, Curtis Podcast Network, Curtis, he – was laughing about it because all last year, that last play of the game where the Colts lost to the Texans, you know, it was kind of a bad pass by Minshew. You know, Goodson didn't come up with it. it, it, it Wally would have been six if that play connects the way that it should have. And all offseason, you know, Colts fans were, if that was JT, you know, that, that would have been a touchdown. And then he comes out, it's, what is it, third down or third and short. They do that little dink play, kind of the kind of the same play. And it just hammer hands. And he, he thought that was funny because they couldn't connect on it, in the, you know, in week two. But, you know, it, I don't like nothing could seem to go right. And no. it, it seemed like every time that they were getting any kind of momentum, boom, interception. Oh, they get the get the uh, get the fumble, you know, turnover, get it out on the 20. And I, I think that was the, like a good Jonathan Taylor ran called back for a holding. Like, it just seemed like every time there was any progress. OK, wow. it's 13 to three. They're about to kick a field goal, make it a touchdown game. Yep. And they like lost some yards because of Trey Sermon makes it a 50 and Matt Gage just had an operation. It's like just nothing could go right in this game. Yeah. Um, also we had the ball for under seven minutes in the first half. Yeah. That's just got, I mean, it was, it was basically the same amount of time too. I think we ended up having it for like 13 or something in the it second was, half. Yeah. It was a total of like 19, almost 20 minutes. Almost 20 minutes of we had, yeah, and they had it for fucking 40. Yeah. I mean, and that's it was unacceptable. The, it was the same thing with Houston. Like, all, yeah. all the Packers did was copy Houston's game plan, and it worked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for our full thoughts on this game, go to the Unstable YouTube. We're going to record the full game recap uh, just after this, actually. Um, speaking of, you, you mentioned a mediocre quarterback to below average. Uh, Jets, Titans, speaking of a mediocre quarterback, Will Levis. <laughs> Funniest fumble. That guy just keeps making memes about himself. And, you know, I feel bad for him, too. I mean, he's, he doesn't seem like an asshole. He seems like a nice guy. He doesn't deserve to get, you know, but I guess lambasted in the media, although that was a really bad fumble. That was a really yeah. bad fumble. I, I saw a meme where, you know, he, he had that horrible pick or, you know, he just did that weird, like, shovel thing right to the defender. The Carson then, Wentz. That's what, yeah, that's what I prefer. Yeah. yeah. And then in this one, he had that horrible fumble, whatever it was. And then someone made a meme of like the next, uh, the next, the next uh, Will Levis mistake. And it's just him, like they just flipped him over and put him on his head. <laughs> oh, I love the internet sometimes, but yeah, I mean, this wasn't like an like a very this was not an enticing game. No, it was just you know a lot of rushing. Like it, neither quarterback at two hundred yards. It was just. It seemed like it, I didn't watch any of it, just kind of what they showed us on, you know, red zone. But it just seemed like a real, like a like a slugfest is really what it looked like. Yeah, slug slugfest in the defense is is they're punching each other a lot. It's it's definitely defensive punches. Yeah. Um, Braylon Allen, also the NFL's youngest player, uh, scored two touchdowns. Um, the Titans are because because I, I saw something someone put out. It, it was like. There's five teams that need to win week three, right? And the Titans are 0-2 as well, and the Titans were not in it. The Colts, it was the Colts, Ravens, I think the 49ers feel like it's a must win. Um, who else? Not even the Panthers. Like, Oh, the Jags as well. Uh, well. The Panthers are just in some of this. I think the Broncos and the Bengals were the teams. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like that. I mean, I, I feel like... Going into the year, like we were, we were a little like, okay, maybe the Titans. Like you don't count them out. You can't really count out anyone in the AFC South, especially. You you know I counted them out because it's the AFC South. <laughs> um, I mean, is it, it's time to count them out now, right? Like we can't, we can't keep doing this. We can't believe in Will Levis again. Mm -hmm. He's no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's rough. Yeah. Uh, 49ers Vikings. The Vikings come away with a big upset, twenty three seventeen. Um, this 
uh, Brian Flores led Vikings defense is really, really good. They're really good. And the Vikings or the, the 49ers like really need McCaffrey back. I think that was like a big aspect to their offense. Even there was intangibles to it that you can't really put on a spreadsheet and say, this is what you're missing, blah, blah, blah. Like Mason, yeah, 20 carries for 100 yards, five yards a carry and a touchdown. That's pretty damn good. But McCaffrey is like that extra beast. It's another animal. And uh, the Vikings are 2-0. and Just crazy. Yeah. I have no idea how. <laughs> but if... Yeah. I, if I, I uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I can't imagine a world where Brock Purdy throws for over 300 yards and the 49ers lose the game. I, I, that's, that's, that's the one thing that surprised me the most. He only had eight incomplete. He did have a pick, but eight incompletions and 319 yards. Yeah. That's a game the 49ers should have won. Oh that's, yeah, that's crazy to me. And I mean, Darnold, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't a modest day. He didn't have a modest day whatsoever. Two sixty eight and two touchdowns with a pick. Jefferson did go down, but like that, that's like I'm looking at the stat right now. That's like Randy Moss. Yeah. Except for the three touchdowns, but like four receptions for one thirty three. That's insane. Yeah, that's that's pretty 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 efficient. <laughs> he will be uh, he will be playing this weekend. Uh, he did say that. Um, if any any fantasy people are listening. Uh, Seahawks Patriots, the weirdest Super Bowl rematch. I feel like the <laughs> Geno Smith versus Jacoby Brissett. That weird ass game. Uh, but Seattle just sneaks out of there uh, with a victory, and the Patriots are one and one. But listen, I still believe in the Pats. It's something about the logo, something about their defense. They got a good defense. I still believe in them. To they're they're going to be trouble. I think down the line for some teams. Yeah, the if you just kind of look at it, and again, this is another like if you're he went thirty, Geno Smith went thirty three of forty four, over three hundred yards again. I'm like, yeah, this is a game that the Seahawks definitely should have won. They barely inked it out, and I think it's mostly because the Patriots ran the ball so well, and Seahawks didn't. You know, they didn't have oh gosh, what's his name? I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Walker. Name. Thank Kenneth you, Kenneth Walker. Walker. That's Charbonnet, and he only he, he did less than three yards per carry, and I think that right there is kind of the big reason that the Patriots, it was as close as it was. I mean, they had a couple of receivers go over 100. Of course, DK Metcalf, I feel like. Yeah, Metcalf had basis. a day. Yeah. Um, I can't say Jackson. I'm not even going to try to say it. <laughs> 12 catches for 117 yards is pretty ridiculous, too. Yeah. But, yeah, this was, a, this was two very different teams, very different offenses, and both ran their offenses very well. It's a fun game. It really was. Hunter Henry led the team in receptions with eight receptions. That doesn't um, surprise me with Jacoby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I even thought that that tight ends would be pretty valuable. Like I think I drafted Henry in one of my leagues because I had a feeling he was going to be looking for tight ends. They're just reliable. I mean, he's he comes from the – he worked with Luck, right? And was he there in 2018? I think he was. Who, Jacoby? Yeah. Yeah, I think he... God, when was he there? It feels like it was so long ago. I'm pulling up their roster right now. Yes, he was. So, um, Brissett working with Brady and Luck, those two guys were well-known for, for looking for their tight ends. They, they really valued their tight ends. So, it's not a shock here. Um, and the Patriots also did... I, not dominated like, like the Colts and Packers, but uh, they did pretty well in, in time of possession. They, they had 35-29. Um, I don't really know. Oh, yeah, because of overtime. But uh, they did pretty well in that. You can tell they just ran the ball really well. Um, and it was Antonio Gibson. Haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah. What was that? Former commander. Every, every time I was going to say Redskins. <laughs> For, former commander, Redskin, Washington football <laughs> teamer. Uh, the commanders get it done. With seven field goals, and the Giants literally had no kicker, um, and they win by three. This again, a really weird game, bizarre. I don't even know why this game was played. Who who even wanted to watch this game? No, it it, it looked very boring. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that uh, that Colts Broncos game where they kicked what was it five or six field goals? Just a uh, boring... the Thursday night game. It was the worst Thursday night game of all time. Just boring. Yeah. <laughs> Sloppy. Just kind of what you expect from Giants and Commanders. 
<laughs> same same thing with Chargers Panthers. Nothing really exciting there. The Panthers are just so bad. They're they're the incredibly though, horrible. Two, two and zero. Oh? They've I I don't I'm back and forth on the Chargers. I'm really not sure because they've had a weak schedule to come out of the year, but they're winning these games in like pretty easy fashion. That's what good teams do. The good teams are going to kick. You know they're going to beat up on the lower teams. Now we got to see how they're going to play against a somewhat even team. I don't even know who who they have this week. Um, I'll have to check on that. But so like what happened with Justin Herbert? I remember where it was like every week 300, 300 yards, two two fifty, three hundred. 130 yards. Of course, J.K. Dobbins, he's having some kind of resurgence, man. He's been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and well, then and Cus Edwards, like, they've, they've got a really good run game there. I think Dobbins, did he go to Michigan? Uh, no, he went to Ohio State. But, uh, mm-hmm. oh, of course. Um, Har- Harbaugh seems to love Dobbins. I- I'm yeah. sure he, he had some run-ins with him at Michigan. Um, this one, it, it, I mean, it just seemed like they knew. To, <laughs> the Chargers knew. Just run the fucking ball. That's it. That's all you really have to do. They, of course, you don't need to ask Herbert to do anything else. Of course, Bryce Young benched after this game. Yeah, I feel bad for the kid. I he really went to do. a shitty franchise. He was just given a really poor situation. Now you got the Red Rocket, which we'll we'll talk about that a little later in our predictions. Um, Browns and Jags. The Jags are zero and two. The AFC South, besides the Texans, are zero and two. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Um, did the Browns, I don't think the Browns won this game. I just think the Jaguars completely lost it. Yeah. Trevor bank field for real. Like we're, we're, we're really doing that. Like, does it look like Trevor has just completely regressed? Like, I mean, he had a yeah. lot of, you know, he has a lot of talent. He has, you know, but it's just, I just haven't seen that. Like, like he, I mean, he's a tough guy plays through injury, you know, I'll, I'll give him his, his dues, but like, I just haven't seen like that killer instinct in him that, and he threw less than fifty percent in this game. It's just I haven't seen. I, this is I a game don't. You win. I don't. <laughs> this just yeah. This I mean, it has to be a game you win. You have the Browns coming in here with Deshaun Watson, who has been, I mean, lackluster to be nice about it. That that's like the nicest way I can say it. He's been awful. He's been so bad. And yes, they're the Browns' defense is pretty damn good. Uh, and their run game. I mean, they have everything else except this is a quarterback league. And if you have a quarterback who sucks and another quarterback who is supposed to be good, why is the quarterback who's not supposed or who is supposed to be good not winning that game? It's because he's just not that good. We I heard the Andrew Luck comparisons when he got when he got drafted. I haven't seen Andrew Luck whatsoever. I haven't even seen the shadow of Andrew Luck coming out in Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. And I, he has no I, aura. There's no to use a TikTok term. He has no aura. No, there's I agree nothing that, that scares me about Trevor Lawrence. No. I mean, his receivers kind of. I mean, I, I like I like Etienne, and I they didn't set Brian him up. Thomas he's has a, been good though. <laughs> he's a dog. He's yeah. a fucking dog. Yeah. yeah. But besides I, I him, Jacksonville's defense is pretty solid. But it's man, it's just it's just like the Colts. Like there's just no no complimentary football. There's nothing. They're just not there's playing nothing, as a team at all. Justin or Trevor Lawrence just doesn't get me up. Mm-hmm. Like even if I was a Jags fan, like he's not getting me up to go win a football game, or, or I played for the Jags or something. Like he's just not doing that. I have no interest in him. Uh, yeah, I hope he goes to a new team. I feel like it has something to do with Jacksonville. It has something to do with the colors the teal and whatever. And I know we're saying that as Colts fans who haven't won in Jacksonville in, uh, in a decade, but there's just nothing. I've, I've been there. I don't feel any sort of like walking in there like, oh shit, like we're walking into a, into a, the, the den basically like a, a, ja- a Jaguar's cage, a cage Jaguar. Mm-hmm. We're just not doing that. Like it's all concrete. It's very boring. They got to update the stadium before they can even have any sort of winning. Um, Gardner Minshew, the curse lives on for the Ravens. He goes into Baltimore for the second straight year, beats the Ravens. What a game. Gardner fucking Minshew. Give him the MVP. Threw it 38 times, 276 and a touchdown. Um, Devontae Adams was key in this game. I, I really, I was a little worried about him coming into the year. He, he didn't really seem too happy 
at the end of last year. I mean, who would have been on that Raiders team? Disaster. But this was a signature win for yeah. Antonio Pierce. Maybe yeah. besides the Chiefs ones. But this really was a signature win because the Chiefs ones, there was something about it where it was very defensive. It was a defensive battle. You know, it's like you're not going to get that every time with Mahomes. You're not going to get that in the playoffs. That performance from the Ravens, you're going to get in the playoffs. That's something you could see from them. The Raiders are are quietly, quietly pretty good. Yeah, it's they've got some like Devontae Adams is still one of the better receivers in the league. He's just had below average quarterbacks. And I'm not yeah. saying that Gardner Mitchell is above average. I mean, he has games like this where he looks untouchable. And then he has other games where it's like, okay, that's why he's he's got a bit he of can, he just does a good job of of not turning the football over. That's and that's all you can it's, ask for him in those situations. It's surprising that they got this win in Baltimore, and they had no run game going on, none whatsoever. Yeah, it, they rushed like twenty eight yards or something. Like that. Not very good, but man, Devontae Adams, he Brock Bowers, he's he's been great. So. And Alexander Madison had a great week last week. He was expected to have a very big week again, and he just did nothing. Nothing. Um, but they found a way to do it. And again, Antonio Pierce, I think there's something to that. He gets him up and Harbaugh has been there 10 years. Like they, I, there, there's a thought that I've, I speak with Raven fan, Ravens fans. There's definitely the thought of maybe it's time you got to move away. I mean, you, you lose Mike McDonald to the Seahawks, big defensive coordinator. Their defense just hasn't been impressive. It hasn't been what it was last year. And, and their offensive line is, really not good they are I mean Lamar is running the football because he has to they can't even commit truly commit to the running game because Lamar can't run the football Henry I mean you got to run it with him 20 times at least to, yeah. to really get it's, the full Derrick Henry effect yeah that, that's what I was saying when he was with Tennessee and I, I can't remember the statistics I had it all pulled up I looked every game with Derrick Henry and every game he touched the ball more than t- like 20 times yeah. I think Tennessee was like, I think it was some stupid stat, like nine and one or something like that. Yeah. So the magic number with Henry has always been 20. Mm-hmm. And and again, in this game, 18 for 84, he's averaging almost five yards a pop. It's like, got, got to feed the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, I mean, I like Zay Flowers. I like Mark Andrews, but this is a game that's, I mean, this is a team where the, it's going to go through the run. You brought Derrick Henry in for a reason. He's, Probably one of the most battle-tested running backs in the league, and the most consistent. Yeah, most reliable. So it's like you've got to you got to lean on him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Rams, Cardinals. Marvin Harrison Jr. has arrived in the NFL. Um, tw- uh, sorry, I'm looking at James Conner. James Conner had a crazy, crazy numbers too. Harrison, four receptions, one thirty, and two touchdowns. He had those two touchdowns in the first seven minutes. I was playing against him in fantasy this week, Shit. and it was. It was at the four o'clock games. I look at like four fifteen, and he already has twenty some of the points. I I literally just scream, "What the fuck? What is going on? What is with this guy?" He just explodes. Connor twenty one carries, uh, one twenty two and a touchdown, and the Rams are just. Uh, I don't want to say they're bad. I don't want to say they're bad. This feels like one of those that maybe it just got out of hand really fast for them. I still think. I mean, they're but they just don't have receivers right now. They don't. They don't have anyone healthy. Both, uh, Cooper Cup went down. N- N- uh, Puka Nakua is on. Nakua didn't even play. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's slim pickings in the receiving core. <laughs> they, I think they're like number five or six. I, I had to pick them up on fantasy because they. I saw too late that AJ Brown was out. I picked him up. I was like, oh, this guy is probably like their five or six, and he's like their number two right now. It wasn't Van Jefferson. I keep wanting to say Van Jefferson. He's in Pittsburgh now. Um, it was Robinson or no, uh, Tyler Johnson. I think he's like their number two on the depth chart. Okay, he didn't do shit. <laughs> no, he didn't do anything. I want to look at their depth chart right now. Uh, how about a little Miller Murray, man? 19 of 21. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He, he's having, he, I think we forgot about Kyler, his injury, how bad the Cardinals were last year. I forgot about Kyler. I forgot how, about how he's actually somewhat good. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, you know, everyone was writing off Marvin Harrison already after last, you know, the last week he went like one reception for four yards. Like, 
even Colts fans, I saw them on the page. Oh, this is the guy you wanted to trade up for? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I still do want him. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I would love to have him. <laughs> I would I would love to have him. I'll, I'll, get, I'll, give them, hmm. I'll give them Mitchell right now for him. Hmm. Take Mitchell. Yeah. And and our entire secondary. It doesn't they don't even do anything anyways. Take yeah, the secondary with you. Nobody wants it. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants it. <laughs> oh man. Steelers Broncos. Um this this game this game looks like it sucked. Really sucked. Yeah. But Justin Fields is undefeated as a starter in Pittsburgh, so there's that. I don't know. I I, I can't just looking at it, I don't know how the Steelers I, I don't know how either either of these teams would have won the game. It's it, it looks so bad. Bonics. They should have lost. Both of them should be a given losses. But these are games. This is a game that Mike Tomlin just wins. These are yeah. games Tomlin just figures out how to win. I've never. I mean, it's like it's honestly like Belichick with with the Pats with Mac Jones. Like they were just yeah. figuring out how to win games at times, except against the Colts. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really have anything else to say. I feel like I was watching Red Zone. I barely saw this game whatsoever, yeah. and. I had no interest in even going to look at it. Bo Nix, not a bad, not an awful day. 20, 20 for 35 with 246 and two picks. I mean, again, two picks were really, they really hurt them. And he just didn't, he wasn't good enough. I mean, he had a red zone interception too. Um, that was ugly. So the big one, the big one, Bengals, Chiefs. Um, I'm going to say this. I know everyone says the Chiefs get the get the all the all the calls. They get them all. That was a defensive pass interference. I know everyone's saying the, the defender has the right to the ball. You can't use your helmet to go through the back of another player to go get the football. That is defensive pass interference by the book. And and saying, oh, you can't decide a game based on that call. That just don't break the rules. That's pretty simple. There are specific rules that they set. And I can I will agree that officials are not consistent whatsoever. I mean Anthony Richardson literally got thrown onto his head against Houston and there was and no his helmet flew off. No, yeah, no no penalty there. They are not consistent when it comes to penalties, but that was a blatant I mean I, I saw it and I pointed, I was like, Oh, that's gonna be a pass from field. Yeah. yeah, I saw and, I, I saw the end of that game too, and it was like I mean I Yeah, they're gonna get the call there, but you also did it. Like it wasn't like some ticky tack, like just as the ball was getting like it he was, was already on him. It's yeah. like you did it. Just I mean, it sucks, but yeah, I mean, it, you committed the penalty. The Patrick ball was Holmes. five yards away, <laughs> yeah. and he went for it. Like yeah. what? What do you these people? Do? I mean, like I get it. You hit people hate the Chiefs. You hate them because they win. Like, dude, they, they they're just fucking good. And you know what? They maybe they do get the benefit of the doubt. We did the same thing with Brady. Good teams get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to certain things. That's just how officiating is. Um, if you're going to cry about it, then maybe your team should be better at football. Yeah. That's that's it. The, including the Colts. I'd say that about the Colts. Yeah. And one but, game, don't leave the game in the hands of the refs. Yeah. That that too. If you're going to complain about the refs, don't leave it in their hands. Don't throw don't throw interceptions. Don't fumble the fucking football after you after you have an interception. Mm-hmm. Don't fumble it. And for a fumble six, like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I will say that Joe Burrow outplayed Mahomes big time in this game. This was a big confidence builder for them. I think they needed yeah. this. Patrick did not. He didn't look good in the game. He just didn't. The Chiefs, for the most part, or Bengals, for the most part, outplayed them. They just had a couple of key drives, key scores that they needed. And that last drive, I, so, you know, Bengals couldn't run the ball for shit. But <laughs> that's but this is hey, this is what good teams do. Again, they find a way to win when they're not playing at their best. And I can tell you right now, as as someone who has watched the Chiefs play before, that was not their best. Last week was not their best against Baltimore, and they still found a way to win. Yep. They they're still finding ways to win against really really good football teams. Um, here it is: Mahomes threw an interception. Uh, and with one second to go, or the play started with one second left in the third quarter. And then one, two, three plays later, Burrow fumbled. It was picked up by Kansas City and run back for a touchdown. And, oh, and they failed the two-point conversion as well. So that's the other thing. Um, so you're just crying because you want to cry. That's it. Yep. Just 
be be an adult and take the loss like like an adult. Just say we lost because we made mistakes that they didn't. Take it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bears Texans. Oh man. Um, this one the over was looking great mm-hmm. until they punted six straight times and didn't score in the third quarter, and. Houston just kind of let Chicago back into this one. It, it kind of, that's what it felt like last week too. Like they just kind of let us back in. They did the same thing with Chicago, but they put their foot down. And again, that's another good teams are able to do that. They may let up on you, but they're going to put their foot down and it's going to work. The Colts, if they're up, they're going to let up on you. And then they're not going to put their foot down because they're just not good enough for that. Mm-hmm. Um, the Texans are a real team. I thought Caleb Williams for all of his mistakes he did make, I thought he made a lot of really good passes too. Yeah. There were some really great passes that like an NFL quarterback makes, and I'm not worried about him whatsoever. Yeah. I think he'll be fine in time. He just got has to get used to the game pace. Mm-hmm. I I mean I I want to hate him. <laughs> just just for some of the things but it's yeah, like I was saying, he, he made like you were saying, he made some really good throws. You know, there's a couple of bad ones. But you're going to get that out of a rookie. They couldn't run the ball for squat, which is a big part of the reason why they lost. And man, Texans C.J. Stroud, he looked pretty good, you know, especially in the first half. Nico Collins is looking like one of the best receivers in the league. Oh, yeah. and you know he made some big time catches in this game against the Colts. You know he had that that sideline grab that just that clinched that's, pretty much that's, clinched the game. Yeah, that's that's what that's what a top tier wide receiver in, in the NFL does. So. He, I think he's established himself as a is one one of the top receivers. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Falcons Eagles, the Falcons steal one. Feels like they stole one um, from Philly. Saquon, a big drop on on third down. I mean, I I want to go back to the first quarter. Them going forward on fourth down, bypassing the three points. Again, this is my this is my thing, especially because Steichen came from Sirianni. This does not surprise me. Take the points that are in front of you. Take the three points because those points will seem to be valuable. They would have been really valuable for Philly. Now, obviously, can't change the past without changing what happens in the rest of the game. But always taking the points is just more important. And it it, it baffles me that, that these teams don't get that. I am very, very frustrated at this game. And I'm very frustrated. Because, I mean, I, I was playing with free money. Okay, I have price picks, whatever. <laughs> I was playing with free money, so it didn't cost me anything. But I had, I think, uh, fields to get two passing touchdowns. I had Saquon to get any any touchdown, rus- rushing yeah. or receiving. And I had both uh, Robinson and Barkley to go over 96 yards. I also needed Barkley to get a touchdown. Oh, no. So... Woo. He had it at the half yard line, and they called it back, and then did the touch push. I was like, "Dude, that play cost me one hundred and thirty five dollars." <laughs> I was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" And then he had that one last pass at the end of the game for whatever reason they passed it. I'm like, he's, "It's probably six if he catches the ball," <laughs> and he just he, he did a Jonathan Taylor, and I was like. I don't, I don't know if that, honestly, I'm not sure if that was six or not, because it, it looked it like close. someone was closing in. It would have been close. If he runs him over, I think he would have got in. But, uh, but dude, he went down at the half yard. I was like, that that was $135 right there. Because like, I would have gotten the second touchdown for <laughs> for Hurts. I would have gotten the touchdown for Barkley. Dude, I had a six-way parlay that would have paid out almost 1000 bucks. Wow. I think London needed, yeah, I, I needed London to get 30 more yards. And I needed that second fields touchdown. Well, speaking of London, he got uh, his his uh, his celebration was uh, yeah. interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I think he got fined as well. I, I know he got the unsportsmanlike, which Young Hoku is just fucking automatic. I Dude, think I more people need to talk about Young, Young Hoku was going to miss that. <laughs> I was praying he was going to miss that field goal. Like, can I please get overtime? <laughs> He's just so good. He's so fucking good. So good. He is. He is just, and and I don't oh. think he gets enough, enough of love compared to you know like Bucker, um, Tucker, of course, even like uh, Jake Elliott for Philly. I think he gets more love than Young Hoku. I love Young Hoku. He just 
He just got he's got some swagger about him too. He's just awesome. I love it. I, I think I won a very small parlay because of him because I had two field goals. He got three. Oh so. yeah. So he, had he a, helped me a little bit, but man, that that touchdown, that half yard to Barkley, man, I'm I'm so bitter about that. <laughs> it didn't cost me anything, so it's not that big of a deal. But man, it's free have, money. It would have been it would have been nice. It still hurts. It, Fucking it's still Sirianni, hurts. I hate his face so much. <laughs> I've I have uh, ever since he did what he did in Indy a couple of years ago. Yep. I was like, dude, we're we're like four and eight. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is why are you right. Shut up. Hire him screaming? then. Hire him then. No, yeah. then shut shut the fuck up. I can't. We're, so you like, think the, like? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, there was one I can't remember exactly what it was for, but he threw the challenge. It was an obvious like the refs fucked it up. You're gonna challenge. You're gonna win. He throws the challenge flag, and he's like. Just the arrogance on this fucker. I'm like, dude, I can't stand him. <laughs> and especially, I think they are, they're two and nine in their last 11. Yeah. Like it, when you're winning, it works. And I mean, they are just, they are not good right now. I, I don't, I think they're going to rebound. I think Philly's yeah. going to be fine because they just have too much talent. To, they didn't have AJ Brown either. So it was. Yeah. They have too much talent to, to not at least make the playoffs. In, in my eyes, I mean, who knows? I could be wrong, but um, let's move. I'm going to go to my bets for week three. Uh, Thursday Night Football is starting in a few minutes, um, and I don't know if I even want to watch this game. I'm going to because it's football, but I don't know if I really want to. All right, to. I need Aaron Rodgers, Brees Hall. <laughs> hey, I got I got a bunch of referral money, so it was all, it was all free <laughs> money I'm playing with. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm, I'm taking Houston minus two and a half. Uh, that's on hard rock, hard rock bet. Um, minus two and a half against the Vikings. I think that's really close. I think that, I think they'll keep it close. I think the Vikings are going to keep this one within a score, but I feel like two and a half is really small. This is a Stefan Diggs kind of revenge game. I really like Houston to win this one. Maybe like a, a last second field goal or even like a five or six point win. Yeah, I definitely lean to the Texans in this one. This will be a game where the Vikings can prove if they're the real deal or if it's just been kind of that, you know, that Ryan Fitzpatrick effect and it just fades off. Yeah. yeah. My uh, spread underdog is Washington plus seven and a half. They're going to Cincinnati. Um, that just seemed really big. Primetime has been somewhat low scoring lately. I, I ever, ever since like, Ever since 21, I think, after 2021, primetime games just haven't really hit for me. They, they haven't been very good. A lot, of, a lot of them feel like they're not as exciting. Um, and, you know, c- the Commanders, I think they're going to find a way to get a lot of yards. Jaden Daniels gets a lot of yards. He's actually been one of the better rookie quarterbacks performance-wise. Um, and the Bengals, again, like this is a, a must-win for them. But it's at home. You know, they, they, lo- they lose a tough one. I feel like Washington's just going to keep it close. I feel like they're a little uh, low confidence right now. Yeah, I think I'm on the other side. I think this is a game where Joe Burrow and the Bengals get it right. And I, I think they make they get that win and they kind of stomp, stomp the commanders a little bit. I'd, I'd a lean a bit more. cover too. Yeah, I, I, I'm leaning more towards the Bengals might actually cover that. but <laughs> It seems, like, like, it seems right. like too many points. Way too many points. The script, the script won't allow for it. <laughs> uh, my favorite money line. I like the Bucks over the Broncos, just because the Broncos are bad. Trash. That's it. Uh, my underdog money line. Shockingly, the Chicago Bears are a underdog at home. Um, like a point. Yeah, I have no faith in us. Uh, zero faith. If we can't beat Malik Willis, who can we beat? They gotta beat him, man. They gotta get it right. Bryce Young? <laughs> can we? Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I like Chicago money line. Um, I have Diggs over 45 and a half reception yards. Um, that revenge game against Minnesota. Uh, I feel like Minnesota is going to try and shut down Nico Collins more than anything. He's been kind of the biggest threat. And Tank Dell, I mean, uh, Stroud and Dell are like best friends. So you yeah, can't, it feels like you can't stop all three of them. There's always going to be one. 
And there's uh, Tank Dell has been off to an awfully so start. It seems like the only way they're getting him the ball is in the run game, which doesn't make sense. And I, I, I talked about it on this AFC South show when you know Curtis was talking about his Texans. They're going to be all over Nico Collins. I don't know, like I don't know how yeah. <laughs> how well you can guard Nico Collins, but I think this is going to leave a big opportunity for Tank Dell. Yeah, um, and then I'm going just because it's it's Sunday Night Football. Sunday Night Football is my favorite of the prime time. Uh, I'm going f- over 46 and a half in Kansas City and Atlanta, uh, just because I always I root for the over. I want points in Sunday Night Football. It's like the perfect way to close out a football Sunday with a lot of points on Sunday Night Football. Plus, I mean the Chiefs have a great defense, but. Uh, the Falcons have a lot of weapons. The Chiefs have a lot of offensive weapons. So I'm just praying. I'm just hoping and praying, throwing up a prayer there. I don't know, man. It's what are we going to get out of the Falcons? What are we going to get out of? I'm curious. Know, man. He's very curious. Prime time wise, yet Cousins hasn't done great. So. <laughs> no, but he's he's oh, he's two and zero oh in his last two prime time games, and, and, and Chiefs, he's like man. he's like four or five and one in his last or four, uh, no, yeah, four and one in his last five prime time games. I trust Kirk Cousins in primetime now. He's flipped me. <laughs> Interesting. And I, I really do like Bijan. So if they, yeah, keep the score up because I, I think I'm playing him again in that too. <laughs> so let's go Bijan, baby. All right. We're going to pick the games, the Sunday and the Monday games. Uh, we're not going to pick the Thursday games because it's going to be too late. Um, so just give me like one sentence, like a short little excerpt as to why you think the team is going to win the game. Start Giants Browns. Uh, I'm going Browns because the Giants are bad. That's it. <laughs> I, I I don't know which way I went with this one, man. To be honest, Giants Browns. I think I actually took the Browns, and I just did it because it's a home game. Like, <laughs> I, I think game both of their offenses, all. both of their offenses, are not very good. But uh, mm-hmm. I think the Browns defense is better than the Giants yeah. defense. So that's it. I mean, there's. It's just the Giants are bad. They're just yeah. a bad football team. Um, Packers, Titans. I So Jordan Love is is trending to play this weekend, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I If it was Malik Willis, I would say I like the Titans. It feels like a game like the Packers are coming off of a big win with their backup quarterback. They're going into Tennessee. It just feels like a game the Titans will shut them down on defense and like find a way to win really, really ugly. Um, but if love comes back, I'm going back with the Packers. I think the Packers are going to just find a way to win this one. I, I think either way I would have taken the Packers. I, I, I like the Packers game plan that they had against the Colts. It was the one that they needed to do. Matt LaFleur just out coached Steichen in that one. Yeah. And LaFleur is a great, he, I still think LaFleur is a pretty good coach. I know some yeah. people say otherwise, but he's been solid. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bears Colts again. I'm going Bears because they have not given me a reason to pick for the Colts. I, this is I, this almost feels like a season on the line kind of thing for the Colts. I, it's it's borderline. I, yeah. I have to say I have to go with the Colts. It's a home game. They have to win this game. Like have to. Is is this <laughs> Ring of Honor night as well or Ring of Honor day? I am not there sure. has to be something with the Super Bowl with with. With Super Bowl, when we, you know, because we beat them, of course, and Dallas it's at home. Clark, I thought they were putting Clark in the Ring of Honor later in the season. I don't remember. But I thought I it was the remember. Dolphins. I thought. Oh, maybe that is the Dolphins game. They're gonna do. They have to do something for this game for the Super Bowl. Um, and Drop I just the feel like, <laughs> Look, we won they, in 07. <laughs> they they finally did. I don't know if I covered this on on the show. They gave away the uh, wild card finalist banner. Or the AFC finalist banner. Oh, thank God. They got rid of it. Finally, they gave it to the guys in Barstool, the and in Chicago. Thank goodness. Okay. Yeah, they have bar. The Barstool office has it up right now in their office. So, pretty hilarious. Uh, Texans Vikings, I'm going to Houston. Um, I think they're rolling right now, especially because it's early in the year. I feel like they they feel like a team that if they're going to lose, it's going to be late. Um, and the Vikings. I can't. I just don't believe that that Sam Darnold can keep this up. He can't outplay C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, if the Vikings are going to win, they're going to have to. It's going to have to lean on on the run. It's going to have to be They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna have to keep it away. Yeah. They're going to have to keep it away from C.J. Stroud. They're going to have to run the ball a lot. 
they're going to have to I mean obviously you're going to get Justin Jefferson involved he's he's not going to be can he can't be stopped he can hopefully be contained uh, but I just don't know if it's enough I mean there's three great weapons on the Houston yeah, side. I don't know what the over is on that game but I'd probably take it 46 <laughs> and a half on ESPN right now I'd probably take it I mean just- I was I was a little wary of it because I was like I don't know if I want to touch it like all these games that feel like they should go over aren't going over so I was like eh, I don't know I mean, with Justin Jefferson and how Darnold's getting it to him and the way that C.J. Stroud and Nico Collins, there's just so much offensive firepower in that game. I just, I think they're, I think Houston's going to be blitzing a lot. I think they're going to be saying what the Colts should have done on Sunday is yeah. make your quarterback beat us. Make Sam Darnold out-duel C.J. Stroud. And if he does that and we lose, then Sam Darnold played a really good fucking game and we lost, but we're not going to let Sam Darnold beat us, you know, just like sit there all day and throw the football, which is what we should have done with Malik Willis, which, I mean, we kind of did in the second half, but not really. Um, Eagles Saints. This is a, I mean, this this feels like a must win for Philly. It, it, it's early, but it feels like a really important game. They have a team that's at least hot. We don't know if they're really good or not, but they're a hot team. It feels like almost must win. Like you can't start this season after being so bad to end the year last year at one and two with the win over Green Bay in a really weird international game that, you know, the field was all fucked up and, and yeah. yeah. Um, again, I think this is another one. I don't know. Again, I don't know what the over is. I'm not looking at that, <clears throat> but I would probably take it in this one too. I mean, 49 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel pretty good about it, man. We're talking 25 points each. Yeah. yeah. I just, with what the Saints did to the Cowboys, who have supposed to have, you know, one of the best defenses in the league, get absolutely shredded by Carr and, and, and Alvin Kamara. I think the Philadelphia Eagles, especially if they get A.J. Brown back, there's a lot of potential for a lot of points in this game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm banking on this being somewhat of a letdown spot for the Saints. That was a big win, you know. I feel like I, I'm. I feel like Philly's going to take this one. Um, I don't even know if it's going to be close. I feel like it'll be like a ten point game. If Philly wins, it'll be like ten points. I'm trying to remember um, who I took in this game. <laughs> I did my pickums, but I don't remember. Yeah, I think I took the Saints actually. Saints? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not a bad. I don't think there's really a wrong, super wrong answer here. Um, Chargers <laughs> Steelers. Pittsburgh is actually favorite, one and a half point favorites. Um, the over under is thirty five and a half. That game seems horrible to watch. Um, I'm going with the Chargers. I like Harbaugh. Yep. I don't even know who's going to play quarterback for the Steelers. I assume it's going to be Fields again. I haven't heard anything about Russell Wilson, um, but they can't keep doing it. It's they got it. They got to lose one at some point. They can't be three and zero. These Steelers cannot be three and zero. I, I definitely took the Chargers there. <laughs> I, I, I like, I've always liked Jim Harbaugh. I, I think he should probably still be the coach of the 49ers. I mean, I like, I like the coach they have now, but and there's Shanahan's no reason for him. Yeah, I, there's, there's no reason that Jim Harbaugh should have been gone in the first place. I'm glad he's back in the NFL, and I think he's doing a great job with the Chargers for, you know, what they've got. And I, I like you said, I just, there's not enough on the Steelers team that I could say was. Just talent wise to beat them. Yeah. You probably have the slowest running back in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Broncos, Bucks, uh, it's the Bucks. Yeah, it's the sure. Bucks. Yeah. I think that's kind of a fair gimme. Yeah. Panthers, Raiders. This one, in my opinion, is not a gimme. I think this is a great spot for the Panthers. The Raiders are gonna come in. This that was a big win for them. They they were probably so high, they're riding high. This is a look-ahead game by definition. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a Gardner Minshew not collapse, but he's going to struggle. I really think he's going to struggle. It's it's the Red Rocket. I like to call him the Red Rocket. I know other people call him the Red Rifle. I like to call him the Red Rocket. Double entendre for dog's penis. Um, I love Andy Dalton. I think he's going to re- – I think this is going to be like a one-week bump. Like it's going to be um, – if you've ever seen Logan – when he gives the shot, when he gives himself the shot at the end of Logan with the, uh, I don't even remember what it was, but it's like the big boost. And he's like, ah, I'm, I'm going to kill everyone. 
that's what's going to happen with this Panthers team. And then next week, they're just going to take a dive again. Uh, but I really like the Panthers here. I'm picking the Panthers. No chance. <laughs> I'm going the Raiders. I'm going. I'm going Brock Bowers. I'm going. I'm going Devontae Adams, man. Can I, and pick them if you're doing a pick them or a Survivor League. If you're doing a Survivor League, pick the Panthers now. This is the game to pick the Panthers. You want to get rid of them early. You don't want to deal with them later. <laughs> um, Dolphin Seahawks. It's it's going to be Skylar Thompson. I don't know how how Ryan Tannehill is not. I don't know how they didn't sign him. I don't. He's he's probably the best quarterback out there right now. Uh, I've been hearing things about Bryce Young maybe going to Miami. I don't know. I, why, if you're Carolina, why would you get rid of him? Like, why you drafted him number one. You, you got to so give him another to, year. Yeah. You, I mean, they have a lot to do, but you can't just give up on the kid before his rookie contracts even expire. That would be malpractice. I mean, I mean they're, not gonna, they're not going to give up the kind of compensation that you, that you paid for him. I've been Definitely. seeing, like, he's projected to be, like, a fifth or a sixth rounder. Like, you can give him – you can trade, like, a fifth or a sixth round pick. I mean, I feel like that's a little – that's cheap. That's really cheap yeah. if that's his value. Yeah. It's I – don't, I don't see them dumping him off. I think this is more of a we, – we forced you on the field too soon. You need to sit back, learn, take the – Yeah. Just take, just take time to just slow the game down. Yeah. I'm, I'm riding with Seattle here um, in this spot. I just don't, the Dolphins are, are, I mean, they're dead. The, the season is almost, it's pretty much over. We'll, we'll wait to see what Tua, um, I think he already said he, he has no plans to retire. I mean, he's, on he, the, did, he did say that. Yeah. I don't know if he'll play this year though. I mean, we don't even know. Yeah. They put him on the IR, so it'll be at least, at least a few more weeks, but yeah, man, it just, that hit wasn't even that bad. And he just kind of fell down, had that rigor in his hand. It's like, dude. He dropped his shoulder yeah. and his head. Um, it was it was the stoppable force. It was the stoppable force versus the movable object of Demar Hamlin, Demar Hamlin's chest and Tua's head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not good. Um, no, it's not a good look. Yeah, Ravens, I agree, Seattle. Ravens, Cowboys. I don't know. This is this is again one of those like the Ravens have a bounce back spot here. They need to win. Like, you're 0-2. You have to win this week. Um, And then the Cowboys, you get your ass kicked. I'm feeling Baltimore here. I I feel like especially they got that, you know, Dallas finally loses that home game. But it felt like they escaped so many games at home in the last couple of years. And they finally lose like that. It's like that bugaboo. Like, they finally lost. I feel like it's going to happen again. I'm going Baltimore. I think I take Dallas in a close one at home. I mean, CeeDee Lamb is so good. He's good. He is it's, very and good. The, and that defense, I mean, they have to be pissed off after, after letting up and 44 he's, points. He's, like, they he's be- probably, like, finally getting into feeling normal as now. As it, like, as much as it hurts me, I, I almost never go for Dallas to a fault because in my pick like I always go against Dallas, and they win. And it's... <laughs> It's like, you know what, I'm actually trying to win in the pick so I'm like, okay, you know what, I think Dallas at home, I think they ink this one out. I think Baltimore comes out kind of, like, they're going to make it a great game, but I think Dallas just has a little too much on both sides of the football. It's crazy to say that Ravens go 0-3, but they haven't been great. Yeah. Now, if they um, run the ball and hammer it at Dallas with, with Henry. Give me 30 carries from, from the Ravens, and I think they're going to yeah. win the game. Yeah. They'll just have give, give me that. Uh 49ers, Rams. I mean, the Rams looked I, – I still don't see San Francisco losing this game. I think the Rams will cover. Um, I just can't see how they're going to lose it. I mean, it's it's six and a half. The Rams are just a hospital right now. They are a hospital. And the 49ers, yeah, you're missing McCaffrey, but you still have – I think Debo went down too. Is Am I right about that? i will help if I could spell. <laughs> Yeah, it said he remains sidelined. Um, the game is likely to be without Christian McCaffrey, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, oh my God. Um, Steve Avila, Jonah Jackson, amongst others. So this is the hospital bowl. This is the uh, injured bowl but man, here. It's the, way, the way that Purdy played in that last game, and they, just, they have a lot. They still have a lot in San Francisco. They really do. The defense, you know, they had a bad day, but I just don't see anything anything on that team that can actually, I don't know. 
The Rams just look terrible. Like they don't I have think... two of their top wide receivers. That I think this is a game the Niners win. Yeah. Um, Lions, Cardinals. So the Cardinals are actually somewhat of a good football team right now. Um, I, I think this is a good bounce back spot for the Lions. I really think it is. Um, Cardinals coming in off a very easy, easy win, um, against the Rams and, and the Lions are looking for a big bounce back spot. And this could be like, this could be a win against a solid football team. The Cardinals look like a solid football team and Dan Campbell needs that solid win. I mean, he, the poor guy just had to sell his house because people were showing up at his house after they lost on Sunday night. And he's yeah. Crazy. Like this is fucking football people chill out. <laughs> like what, what is wrong with these people ment- mentally ill? Um, I'm going lions though. I, I, yeah. I want to pick the lions. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I definitely did pick the lions. I don't, I, I I really like Marvin Harrison, but how long can they keep that up? I, I, I really like the Lions' chances to, to maintain possession. They've got some really good backs. You know, Amon Ross St. Brown is, is very good. Goff has looked stellar since leaving the Rams. So, yeah, I, I, I like the Lions to, to have that bounce back game against which surprisingly looks like a good team in, <laughs> in the Cardinals. Yeah, uh, Amon Ra uh, did practice fully yesterday. So he should be playing on Sunday. Um, Sunday night game, Chiefs, Falcons. I am going to overthink this completely, and I'm going to go with the Falcons. Mm. I feel like the Chiefs, they got to lose one. It is the Chiefs, but they got to lose one. <laughs> they do. I don't know if it's the Falcons to do it, though. <laughs> give me a Kirk. Give me Kirk Cousins, two straight. Two straight primetime wins. Give it to me. I want. To, I'm going to eat it up. It's, I love it's it. It's too good for Kirk Cousins. He already had one. <laughs> the Chiefs' defense, I think, is a lot better than, than Philly has. I like the Chiefs in a in a close one. Um, Jags, Bills, Bills. It's all Bills. Um, yeah. That why would I ever pick the Jaguars ever? Can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Commies and Bengals. Uh, I mean this this is a loser. Well, this is a Bengals season over somewhat. If they lose this game, start 0-3, that's really tough to overcome. Uh, I'm going Bengals. There's a lot of urgency in this team. All right. Well, that's a good place to wrap it up. Um, Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Go check out Unstabled. Our new episode is going to drop, what, tomorrow, right? Uh, Yeah, it'll be done around 8, so I might just drop it tonight or drop it around noon tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, whenever you're listening to this, it should be out at that point. Um, So make sure to go over there, check that out, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on Wednesday.